why I, I I stepped away because I wasn't able to do this last night. Um, but yes, I'm 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 Saurabh Qatari. I, I do content strategy for uh, the VEI um, Virtual Edge Institute, a part of PCMA. So <clears throat> what I'm laying out here is what I call a content framework. This is also known as a messaging hierarchy, and this essentially is my idea, my proposal uh, to Deborah on really an entire rebranding strategy for VEI. And to what, what I'm, for convenience sake, I'm calling it PCMA Digital University. Okay? okay? It's a different idea than what we have right now. It's not about creating a course, it's about creating a university that has students, that has uh, alumni, that has faculty, and more important, most importantly, as we're going to talk about, has a curriculum. Okay? So, with that introduction, what we have, and what we will continue to have, because it's a very effective method of, of digital engagement and online learning. Our modules, right? We've already established that our modules, each subject or topic or chapter, is broken into smaller segments. We've got that part already. We get that. What we're missing is an introduction to the module itself, which stands separate from the from the from the individual segments because whoever is doing the introduction has knowledge of all modules. Therefore, the introductions themselves help to set the framework for the module, but also builds the demand for the other ones. Okay, that's the first piece. Everything you see in green is promotional. This is content that we would create and we would use, but it's also ideal for promoting to students and future students to get more demand. Once we've built this, which you've already built, right? The first thing I want to talk, I'll come back to promotion and practice and live events, which is the left side of the board. The very next thing we establish, as we already did, is so much, a certain percentage of this, or so many hours, will constitute um, a continuing educational uh, credit, right? A, a certification from our part. What we also have the ability to do is decide, in whatever combination we like, and in whatever series of cadence we want, a series, just like you would a class, that is a webinar series, that all gets partial units of accreditation. So if you go to the series, you will not graduate. Even if you do the whole thing, you won't graduate. There's still a little bit left that you have to complete. But every time you go to one of these, you get partial accreditation. So you also get recognition. Most importantly, we get to know who you are. And you didn't commit to all of this. And we'll badge you. We'll give you recognition for every webinar that you're coming to because you are essentially getting the learning content. The other version of this, this is not the entire content, but it's a summary of the webinar, which is not accredited, is a podcast. Believe it or not, tens if not hundreds of thousands of people still listen to podcasts when they're driving, mostly, okay, or when they're on planes. This is content that we're giving away that's value added, but it's not accredited, and it doesn't cost them anything. This is a marketing strategy, the, the podcast itself. Once we have all of this content, so I could have drawn this out, but then I would have to ask everyone to move, so I didn't. Think of this as 12 webinars, which is more than the number of modules you have. But because you're getting it in pieces, you're doing a little bit of a recap. And so you're making it easier to absorb than if they were to do the whole thing at once. All of the knowledge we have, now we talk about changing format from a media perspective. So far, it's all been video, and video with slides, or video with some sort of interactive, right? This is also a video with slides of some sort of interactive. We take the whole thing as a transcript. Right? My recorded, um, my, my, my module, when I had written it, and then we pared it down, was 10,000 words. Right? That's how much the video comes out to if you do that much, and then we pared it down to about 3,500 for what I actually recorded. All of those words are then published, not as is, but they're curated into a book. Right? This is the textbook. What a novel concept from 300 years ago, right? <laughs> Since the Gutenberg Press. We published the textbook for digital engagement strategy, right? Or digital event strategy. That textbook stands by itself as its own sellable product, not because we want to sell it, but because we want to establish a price on it. It's not free, right? So this isn't free, neither is this. Why would this be? If you would like to learn this in a book, and when I say a book, it's not the textbooks I grew up with, it's the textbooks now, which are basically magazines, right? They're very interactive, very visual, but it's another format for what we've created. It's the transcript taken into another format. So you don't have to consume digital media 
to learn about digital media because a lot of the people we want to teach are not comfortable consuming digital media, believe it or not. Okay? Once we have the textbook, we then have the opportunity to create very light versions of the written content too and to blog this till the end of time because we have a textbook on the topic. Now, once people have decided on their engagement strategy for the content in whichever way it suits them and whatever pricing model they want, one component we're missing if we want to be an educational institution is we do not offer people the opportunity to practice the knowledge that they have learned. Our engagement ends with them basically after 14 hours, as we said, good luck. That's not right. From an educational perspective, even from a media perspective, it's not right. Especially for who we are, it's hypocritical. Okay? So, what we add as a component, either as the end of this, or you can sign up for one of these from the webinar, is we add with one or more, it doesn't have to be exclusive, one or more of our platform sponsors, the ability for people who come from us to get a free trial. It's not like they can't get a free trial now, but they get it through us. So we just created a pipeline for industry vendors. Why shouldn't we? The student's getting it for free, you just got a lead. Good luck, try to sell them. But we give them free access to practice what we've taught them. And when they practice, we hold a commitment that we will review it. Because we are an educational institution now, we're a university. If you do your homework, you do the term paper, or you do extra credit, which is what we should consider this, right? It's either the term paper or extra credit, of course we'll review it. And somebody will review it, will give you your, your feedback. And either you're done at that point because you've actually done a digital event now. You practice one, which a lot of people have told me over the years they wish they could do. I wish I could have done a virtual event before I had to do my virtual event. There's so many things I wish I had known. Right? I just don't get the opportunity to do that. So we practice not just how you do webinars, right, and not just how you do hybrid via webinars, but full-blown virtual environments, which are still out there and still have a purpose for people that need them, and how to optimize for mobile. So we practice what people actually need as a part of what we offer with sponsorship for one or more industry platforms. All of this content and every piece of it is also available in our in-person events. But there are two different offerings. Since we already have a bank of subject matter experts, right? Each one of these sessions, I wanted to just call this out when we do it in the webinars to explain what these lines are. When we do it in the webinars, we don't do the whole uh, segment. We don't have to do a whole segment, but we can take pieces of it and put it in. And we can literally take pieces of the segment and play it in the webinar. It's just about how you position it. Nobody will mind. They actually want that content. The same idea applies to the in-person events. In our agenda, we have a certain percentage of our in-person agenda that is actually our subject matter experts. It's our faculty. These are the people that you're coming to this university for. So when we have an in-person event, you shouldn't be surprised that those speakers are there, but they're not delivering their entire segment. They're not even, their entire module, not even an entire segment. They're delivering pieces of it. This is the ultimate teaser to get your certification. Oh, I wish you would do the whole thing because I just got that much of production, but I really want to learn the whole thing. Well, you're right here, just sign up. Sign up for the university, right? And you're not ready to commit? Sign up for the first webinar. At least get a partial credit, right? I honestly think though, because of the credibility of PCMA, you could also offer the entire course as either a day before or a day after the live event, as this is your hands-on one day, do it all. And we know it's all digital media, but some of the people that taught this are gonna be here. They're speaking at the event. You will get some of these sessions live. Oh my gosh, nobody gets that, right? I get Q&A with this guy, where I get Q&A with this gal via video. Three of my presenters would actually be here. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do the whole thing when I'm at the event. Bumping not just registration and certification, but registration for your event as well. Right? It's an add-on to your own to your event. And that's why I, just to summarize, that's why I feel that we really do have to change the branding from a course as part of a division of the largest meetings association in America to really just call out what you started. It's yours, it's PCMA. Make this PCMA digital, make this strategy PCMA university. The last piece here promotion. From the segments that we gather, some of these segments, one minute or less, 
are actually good enough that if we were to package them with a little bit of an intro, they would sell the course. They would sell that module. The entire module would be sold by just that 45 second sound bite. Oh, that was good. Let me put an explanation in front of it or an intro and that'll drive people to the module. Obviously, if you drive them to the module, you'll drive them to certification. The other piece you need to think about, this is a very poor interpretation of the Twitter logo, okay? <laughs> There's a star here for each one of your faculty. Your faculty owns, we don't technically, legally own the content, but we have it. We're the ones that produce it, just like normal faculty, so we also refresh it. Whenever your faculty is tweeting, retweet. Promote your faculty. Even if it's not for their own module, something happened at their job, hey, yay for you. We're always looking out for you. Your followers will start to notice that. Wow, you guys don't just outsource. You really stand behind these people. It's almost like they work for PCMA. You see where I'm going with this? The other thing is, anybody who graduates, retweet and promote them too. Follow them, have them follow you. What's happening in their job when they do their virtual event? We should be their biggest champion just like a business school is for their alumni. Make sense, guys? Makes sense. That's my idea for your media framework or your content strategy. Awesome. Excellent. Thank you for recording it. Yeah. Thank you. A lot of great ideas. Questions? <laughs>